April the 24th, 2021. Guys, you're looking at images that are just a few hours old of Mount Sakurajima in Japan. And we've seen multiple volcanoes this year start to erupt. Here's a little closer image. And it's um, the 25th in Japan, and that's why you see 25 in the first part of this because of the way the time zones are. They've got ash warnings out, and they have falling stone warnings out. I guess that's what you would call it. And the reason uh, I'm kind of focusing on this is because we've had multiple volcanoes go off for the last several months, back even going back into uh, 2020, just different images coming in from NHK K News. And so it, the, one of the things I want to address here is a few videos ago I talked about Grand Solar Minimum and going down through the cycles. And uh, there were some questions there, and folks were saying, what do you mean that we, uh, as far as Grand Solar Minimum and declining cycles? So this is a good opportunity to try to address those questions. And I understand it. A lot of you guys know about Grand Solar Minimum and the degression of the cycles but we've got a lot of new folks there that are asking this question and so I, I feel like I should do it uh, after 12 years because think about it you do have new people all the time but we're looking at uh, Sakurajima but what happens in a solar cycle and let me show you this image now they've been observing solar cycles since six, the 1600s and um, even up through the Carrington event that wiped out the telegraph and a lot of the electrical capacity in the U.S. Again, look up Carrington, C-A-R-R-I-N-G-T-O-N, Carrington event. And you'll see what happened. Even telegraph operators back then were electrocuted because of the energy that struck the telegraph lines. But this one just goes back three cycles. They do go back to the 1600s. But here in solar cycle 20, 22 that peaked in around 1991 in this area, you can see that um, the height of on the graph, and this is measured in sunspots, the number of sunspots. And then when you have more sunspots, you've got more coronal mass ejections, more filament releases, uh, X flares, things like that. And notice we get into solar cycle 23, and it peaked, but it peaked at a lower level as far as number of sunspots. Then we get into the sun um, spot area that we're dealing with now, which we're coming at. We came out of solar cycle 24. Now, guys, look at the difference. Now, the question was if we're going, if we're going to rise back into the peak of solar cycle 25, why are we going into grand solar minimum? It's an honest question. We do have these cycles. They are 11.8 years. So half of that 11.8 years is to get to the top of the trough, and the other half is to the bottom. Now, something I've said for years that Jupiter is the um, binary twin to our sun. It's a failed gas giant. And do you know how long it takes Jupiter to orbit the sun? 11.8 years, the same as the solar cycle. So as it's getting closer to the sun, half of the cycle of Ju Jupiter's orbit. Now imagine this. Your orbit is not a full circle centered on the sun. Part of it is closer to the sun on the increase of these solar cycles. And then, then the uh, second half of the 11.8 years, Jupiter is moving away and getting further away from the sun. So the closer it gets, the more intense the solar cycle is with the solar flares, etc. But that de is declining. In other words, this peak that peaks in the middle of Jupiter's orbit and comes down and goes back up into 24, look at the difference in just in the 1990s. Now we're going into solar cycle 25. And so when I say that it's going to get a little warmer this summer, we're going to see increased uh, solar activity that means that we're going in for the, about the next five years because we're starting into that half cycle now. But it's not going to peak as far as 24 did. Solar cycle 25 um, could be down in this area. If you drew a scale or a line across the scale here, 
you can see from the last solar cycles kind of where the peak's going. And so our peak going into grand solar minimum, not solar minimum, but grand solar minimum, is what we're dealing with. So just to kind of clear that up um, and uh, talk about the fact that when you start seeing this decline in the intensity of each solar cycle, you're talking about winters without summer, more uh, drastic weather extremes, hurricanes, tornadoes, snow, blizzards, ice, the entire nine yards because our shield is a protector. Now, the Earth shields that you um, you can see on your compass from the north to the south, that's the magnetic lines of force. As the solar cycles weaken, it becomes weaker because um, it's like the energy that you put into a dynamo or a motor. The more energy, the faster it turns, and if you can measure the electromagnetic field around it, you'll see that that increases. And so as the sun's energy is up in these solar peaks that you're seeing going back into solar cycle 22, the shields are strengthened because of the energy that you're receiving. Right now, shields are weak. But if uh, let me just go back to one other chart. And this goes back 400 years into uh, the 1600s. And guys, you're looking here going, this is coming out of 2020, and it hasn't been updated uh, recently, but you can see the cycles are still going down into where we're at now. And in 1950s, around 1952, we were at the modern maximum. But back here in the 1800s, it dipped like it's dipping now. You had the Dalton minimum, mini ice age, modern minimum back in the 1650s. Look at how low the solar cycle was by the counted sunspots. And they were doing it with just telescopes then, not space satellites. So uh, when you see these minimums and going into the Dalton minimum here, because we had, and during this period in the 1800s, we had a, year without a summer kill all the crops in the northeast through that area and more people migrated to california then than they did during the gold rush because they could not survive in that climate started rise into the 1850s 1950s we had our peak we had a small peak again here through one two three cycles but now it's dropping rapidly we just talked about Denver having its second winter, crop failure, droughts, things like that. But this is what I'm talking about when I say grand solar minimum because we are that's what we had during the modern minimum and during the Dalton minimum here. The It causes a tremendous amount of solar energy that is captured in the light, electromagnetic magnetic field of the Earth, but it's not reflected by the shields. It, pulls the energy into the earth then you have the volcanoes because of the heat of the core and through the surface you've got ground currents that you're dealing with that CERN takes uh, advantage of very well but what happens is when you start seeing these minimums drop and you the volcanic activity picks up because of that then the cold weather is amplified because of the ash cover from the volcanoes getting into the atmosphere and blocking the sun and and during the modern minimum and other times they've gone back and in, into the arctic and looked at um ice levels they'll drill a hole in the ice pull it up and they can find extreme volcanic ash levels during these dips because shields weak that energy is pulled into the core of the earth and you're seeing what we're seeing now all over the planet with these volcanic eruptions but I felt like I did owe it to the folks that were asking on one of the last videos just a few videos back when I said we're going into Grand Solar Minimal. And that's what I'm talking about. So regardless of what you're doing or where you're at, be aware of it because the climate is changing. It's not global warming. It's actually going to be global cooling over the long run because of the weak shields. You will see times in the summer where you get sunburned very easily because your shields are not working i just wanted to point that out guys it's a heads up we're watching you watch be safe